Hi everyone, uh, my name is Daniela Lard and I am a Canadian singer-songwriter. I'm also a Twitch partner, so I'm streaming music on the internet three days a week. It's a mixture of original songs, cover songs, and also a lot of live looping. So a lot of these instruments that you see around me, we loop them uh, while we're live playing music on the internet. Uh, it's been an adventure, <laughs> to say the least, uh, this last year. And I'm going to be celebrating my one year, my one year streaming anniversary on Twitch tomorrow actually so it's a great a great time for us to be talking anita sweet um what are you gonna be doing for this oh we're throwing a big party <laughs> we're throwing a very big party and i mean it's my one year anniversary on twitch i was one of those musicians that when the lockdowns hit last year all of my in-person shows were being cancelled and so i immediately kind of like within 48 hours i started streaming online but really on facebook instagram youtube uh, but i really found a home on twitch uh, in may of last year so we're going to be looking back to some of those first streams that i was doing i'm probably going to be a little bit embarrassed looking back to see what it was i was producing uh, a year ago with only my cell phone uh, but i think that's half the fun so we're going to go through look at some of our memories some clips that were made throughout the year um eat some cake play some music dance around in a dinosaur costume you know the normal things that people do to party <laughs> and the inspiration from this dinosaur costume came from where exactly oh wow i would say that that is a long story but i suppose it's not really um i'm always somebody who I, I, I'm an entertainer. I like to make people laugh. I like to make people smile. And so when people started posting those videos years ago in the inflatable T-Rex costume, just anything that people were doing in that costume instantly became hilarious. The most mundane tasks, vacuuming the house. I just released a video of me vacuuming the house in my dinosaur costume. It's hilarious. Uh, so that's something that a friend of mine had gifted me um, a couple of years back. And it just started becoming something that I was doing more of uh, also because of the pandemic and the lockdowns. And I was feeling like my only place for human connection was on social media and it wasn't the best place to be. Um, so I wanted to make it a better place to be. If so many of us were looking for that human connection in, in a social media space, then I'm going to do my best to fill it with art and music and hilarious dinosaur videos. And that just kind of took off. People really liked it. They really responded well to it. So we just started building it more and more into our streams together. I started <laughs> running around the basement trying to play instruments with the costume on too. So it really took a life of its own, but uh, it's definitely become a cornerstone of, of my streams. Actually, just hearing you talk about this, it brought back a memory of when I was in school in my college and one of my friends came in with one of those horse heads and we were running around the school wearing that. So mm -hmm. totally yeah, hilariousness and it makes it fun. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh what are some musical projects you've been up to the past year throughout the pandemic uh, i think that i've had to kind of completely re-envision myself as a musician and myself in my career um this year and i think a lot of us have had to do a lot of reflecting and soul searching through all of this and for me my live shows are always myself and my acoustic guitar that was really the extent of what I felt comfortable performing on stage and being here in my house for so long and just desperately wanting to have that opportunity to continue to play music for people. It really propelled me to figure out the audio side, to figure out the video side. How can I make this happen so that I can still see my friends and still play music for them? And so that kind of led into so many different avenues from learning new instruments learning how to loop and be my own one person band uh, it's been a lot of professional development and and even now for the first time like I'm, I'm my audio is coming to you through recording software that i had to learn on on the fly as well so uh, in terms of musical projects it's been um, trying to re-envision what my stage show looks like and also trying to find new ways and new avenues for creativity in terms of songwriting. So I think that 
learning this new skill set has made it a lot easier for me to write new material that doesn't feel like material that I've already written. So I'm working through a couple of different singles, some collaborative projects, and a couple of full length albums that bits and pieces, they're slowly, they're slowly coming together. So nothing yet has been released. You're just like in the process of working on these things. Oh yeah, it's been definitely a creative year yeah. and that year to try to teach myself as much as possible so that I feel, I think, more confident in, in what I'm producing moving forward. So I think that what's going to happen on the other side of this is it's going to be very different than what I was ever capable of before um, I went through this process. I guess it's kind of been a cocoon year. <laughs> I'm sure that like it's been a while, it's been like a whole year so many of us have had the time to learn a lot. So I'm mm -hmm. sure that this has taught you so many things, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so you mentioned that you've been doing a lot of live streaming. Uh, is, it some, is this something you can discuss and tell us more about? Oh, for sure. <laughs> uh, and I, I tend to any, anybody who's who's willing to have a conversation with me, like it just kind of goes straight to how much I love streaming. And let's talk about crazy stream gear. And I just get very excited uh, when you actually get the chance to talk to another human being. Um, it's been something that I can very confidently say has changed my life. And I say on, on stream all the time that I don't think that I would have made it, it through this year with... Um, with my mental health at the state that it is, which is quite good uh, in spite of everything that's been going on uh, without streaming, without having met all of these super lovely people who, who, who keep me sane. Well, as sane as a person running around her basement in a dinosaur costume can be. <laughs> but um, my, my favorite part about music was the, the live performance. It was seeing people, meeting people. I was somebody who was rarely home. I was always in the classroom or I was out at shows. It, it's uh, having that having that taken away was was very, very difficult. Uh, and I really struggled with that in April of last year. So when I was just experimenting on these different platforms, mostly doing research for trying to put together a curriculum for some of my students and stumbling upon this, this, this Twitch music community, um, I'm, I'm so grateful of those tiny micro decisions that led me there because um, I've met some of my best friends. I've had the chance to continue live performance in a year when I haven't been able to leave my house. And I've found um, so many talented musicians also in Ottawa. I've met friends from Ottawa. Mm -hmm. I've met new friends in Toronto and Montreal and Vancouver and internationally. Like it's just such a tight knit, uh, close, ultra supportive community um, that I'm even going to be learning songs from other streamers on the platform uh, to showcase some of their material and to encourage that collaboration that just kind of happens all of the time in that community. So I can't recommend live streaming enough to anybody who will talk to me long enough about it. <laughs> Is this something you think you'd continue after the pandemic? Oh. 100 percent i've yeah. also told everybody they're gonna have to deal with me until i'm 95 in my dinosaur costume playing music on the internet but i think that there's so many interesting opportunities on the other side of this where um, well we already do this in in that uh, occasionally i have to teach live streaming in my classes so now all of my friends online call it bring your friends to work day because I do a showcase and I show the students what it looks like on, on these different platforms. So I'll go live. I'll show them how quickly the chat can move. I'll show them how to engage with the chat and bring that into your performance. And then everybody just gets very excited because they're like, it's bring your friends to work day. And we've got people in Europe and the States and South uh, America and, uh, and, and, and Asia and Australia. Like it's just, just friends from around the world who are essentially coming to class with me. So on the other side of this, when I'm performing on a stage, I can still bring my friends to work with me and everybody yeah. can be a part of that experience too. So I'm definitely never stopping streaming. Cool. Will the dinosaur ever perform with you on stage? Well, I am the dinosaur, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that will be something that I do in real life. You know what? I, I know enough of my friends from Ottawa who have joined me in that stream space 
enough of my friends will will put a lot of pressure on me to perform in the dinosaur costume i'm sure i'm sure i'm not going to get away from that (laughs) (laughs) that'd be wonderful yeah it's it's gonna happen anita (laughs) (laughs) well i'm looking forward to that for sure so apart from the musical projects you've been up to what else have you been up to during the pandemic (sighs) that's a good question (laughs) I feel like I've been a bit of a workaholic through all of this, um, mostly as a coping mechanism. I'm a pretty anxious person. Uh, so the, the, the anxiety within me has always propelled me to work a lot. Uh, if I'm ever procrastinating work, I'm procrastinating work with other work. That's typically the way that it is. So um, to go from streaming only on my cell phone to what you're seeing right now, like all of this took um hundreds if not thousands of hours of research and work and uh, learning how everything works and reading manuals and watching tutorials and and practicing so um above and beyond that i mean i'm I'm typically teaching so i've been um, teaching full-time doing streaming essentially almost full-time as well So in terms of new hobbies, other than just completely obsessing over all of this, I don't think that I've developed many. I should probably go on some more walks. (laughs) But um, I think that it's done me the, the world of good. And it was kind of on my to-do list for like the last five years. And I was always so busy that it was something that I couldn't really take on. So I'm just really pleased that I had the chance to breathe a little bit and a chance to to accomplish uh, really some dreams this year. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing though for- Yeah. That. Um, so my last question for you that I have is one that I've been asking to everyone this year that I thought would be very interesting to know answers. What is one thing you missed the most since the pandemic started? Well, I'm sure everybody's going to answer the same thing. People. Everyone has answered the same thing. (laughs) Everybody has answered people. Rooms filled with people. Yeah. Um, The moments that I'm kind of at my saddest are are when I'm experiencing things that, that are always in person and they're always rooms full of people and they're kind of like these annual events that I've always participated in and 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 just just having them online um there's this moment where i'm just like i'm just so happy to see all your faces on zoom because i'm i'm used to just seeing you in the hallway i'm used to seeing all of you without necessarily having to plan it in advance it just happens magically that i see all of you people out on the streets of ottawa or or around campus or, or at random shows we run into each other um that the spontaneity of seeing those people i miss um, when you see their faces on Zoom, because you haven't seen them just randomly in the halls, there's that like tinge in your heart. You're like, I miss you all so much. But it's also just feeling like, that lack of energy in that online space where you're just like, I know how magical this feels in person. Yeah. And I just desperately want that back. So we all feel that about live performances, but I feel that so much about um, all the graduation ceremonies for my students, all mm. of their charity events that they've been running their own performances that I know how magical the air feels, even if they're so nervous, but the, the, how, how, how great they feel at the end of that. And you can feel that when you're in the room with all of these people. So yeah, uh, I it's feel not, I'm not attended, surprised that everybody I've attended people. many uh, virtual concerts also lately. And yeah. it's just weird to not have the clapping and the screaming and the people around you, you know? And yeah. you mentioned graduations. And I think I mentioned to you last year that I had just graduated. Yes. And I, it still never happened in, in person. You know, like I still never had an actual graduation. Yeah. So I feel for all those people too, who haven't been able to have those celebrations that they should be having. Yeah. But I feel also on the other side of this, that um, we're going to have so much to catch up on that it'll be like, we all joke about it being the roaring twenties, but I really think that it will be, we'll have so much to catch up on that. There's this kind of newfound appreciation for live music so hopefully it won't be so difficult to convince people to go to shows it won't be so difficult to convince people to go out and do things because everybody's just kind of had that 
uh, pent up for like a year and a half now of just just uh, that excitement. We're going to have to make up for a lot of it. So I think we're going to have uh, ultra celebrations. I agree for <laughs> sure, for sure. Look at it on the bright side, right? Always. I, yeah. I can't have it any other way. <laughs> yeah. So I have asked all my questions. I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to bring up or mention that hasn't been mentioned. Oh, I think you covered everything, Anita. Um, this is always really fun. It's fun to see what everybody's up to. Uh, I can't say enough good things about streaming and and the amazing people that I've met this year. We've done huge things, everything from having that celebration. Um, I did my first full original stream, so I was able to play through both of my studio albums on Sunday, which was absolutely magical. Uh, we released all of the instrumentals for my albums, so people can use those for stream people can use them for stems some people have already started doing uh, some kind of remixes of, of, of these tracks um, I'm just really excited to see what the next year is, is going to bring because crazy stuff has happened this year and if anybody wants to connect with me on any social media platforms I've been really making an effort to be updating YouTube a few times a week um, I'm going to be much more active on TikTok. If anybody wants to be doing any duets, I'm going to be doing some dinosaur duets as well. Uh, but there's just going to be, I think, a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. So if anybody's looking for a friend, feel free to connect with me on any of these platforms and uh, <laughs> join us for some dino madness. <laughs> Definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining once again. It was wonderful talking. Absolutely. Thanks, Anita.